Hey guys, so uh, turns out I tend to be doing a lot of BW shows these days. Um, I'm here yet on another BW show. This is the Irwindale uh, Speedway, and uh, I guess it's called, uh, I don't know, the, I forget what it's called, at the races, or I, I don't remember exactly the name of this, uh, the name of the show, but we're here at the Irwindale Speedway. And so it turns out I'm not the only uh, electric VW here. I found another VW um, electric bug uh, that has a plate uh, from EV West. I think there's something going on there. Uh, I talked to the guys and they say they're from the Discovery Channel. And uh, they're shooting a show today. Uh, and they're going to be racing it down the 1 8 mile track that they have here at the Speedway. So. Let's go check it out. So what do you think it's gonna do? I got eighth mile maybe mid to lower eight. Okay. Two of them, look, there's mine right there. Well, yeah, we got two. We got a type one and a type two. And a type two. The infamous J.E. Garcia is here. Yeah. He's the guy who has this company, I think it's called Jack 35. Jack 35. They make this uber excellent camera here. And I see the guy walking around everywhere with an iPhone. With a, Filming he, with an iPhone. Here's the thing, yeah. I, I mean, in a book, that's how it happens. All right, here we go. This is gonna be the electric bus driving, going down the eighth mile. Jay, you did such a good job, man. Is it, is uh, does so this have all your components on it? Uh, well, it's all the, yeah, same so Yeah, component. it's pretty much, it's pretty much the same system. It's a Volkswagen, but you put it on your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to slam that door a little bit harder, because it, you know, it's a BW.
much. That was... Put a turn signal. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> I'm looking out with my soul. All right, that was last week, uh, and this week on my Samba, um, I finished installing the uh, 240 volt service in my uh, my garage here. Um, I'm going to show you what I did uh, rather than showing you when I was doing it, just because I'm not, you know, licensed in the state of California as an electrician, so I I don't want to show people uh, doing something wrong, and you know then have to get into trouble that way, you know, so um, I'd rather just show you, um, and as far as I'm concerned, this is all kind of temporary because the the uh, the Tesla uh, charging standard, uh, as far as I, I I know, as far as I, I believe, is this, it will become the standard, so all these um, EVSCs and all this uh, all this equipment that's available to us right now will change so it's temporary and that's why I didn't want to spend money spend you know buying a, a, a what, what's in the market right now so I just kind of did like a chose the 240 volt uh, plug and I decided to go with that plug just here for my garage and then um, I'll show you uh, all the uh, extensions that I made and all the little connectors that I will be uh, making for being able to charge everywhere else including um, I've, I'm gonna have to figure out somehow how to plug into uh, the uh, EV charge stations that are available uh, somewhere of course most people charge at home <laughs> so I don't have to worry about that you know too much let me show you what I did here let me show you my panel so here's my panel um, it's an old, you know, 70s panel, like most houses here in California have. Um, these are the two new uh, breakers that I installed. And you have to get these big ones like this because then those are attached to each side of the leg inside the, the bus bars inside the, the panel there. Here's my main 100 amp uh, breaker, which I tripped already uh, accidentally. Um, so I know it works and then here are the rest of them and you know this uh, this is what originally what I was using these 30 amp circuits for the dryer so um, it's pretty simple you just have to take that bolt out of there and you they just kind of plug in you don't even have to screw them and they just snap in into the bus bars there so you just have to do that you just have to make sure you get the right ones because there's some like a bunch of different kinds and stuff. Um, here's the panel, and here's my Samba, and this is the the plug that I chose. So this is it says NEMA 1450R, and it's rated uh, 125 250 volts. AC 50 amps so this guy will do 50 amps I know I have 60 uh, amp breakers there but um, yeah um, I don't think I'm actually pulling all 60 amps when I'm charging not yet anyways um, and then I made my charger my cable I made my own extension cord because uh, really what's out there is really expensive you pay you know a hundred bucks hundred plus dollars for an for a 25 foot extension cord with like 10 gauge um, cables and then you have to cut off the, the ends of, of the extension cord so I thought that's too much waste right there so all I did was actually order the cable from um, eBay uh, just raw cable and then I ordered this little uh, braided sleeving that goes on, on these cables and uh, fraction of the cost of uh, buying already made cables um, and I just made my own and on one side has got this uh, big 50 amp connector right this is gonna plug into my 
into my wall there. And then the other side has an Anderson uh, 50 amp connector. And that connector, and on the car I have the same Anderson 50 amp connector. So all I have to do is just plug one side here and the other one in the, uh, in the wall. Connector, which then you'll plug it in here. And then as soon as you plug it into the wall, you hear a little uh, relay go off in the car. That's a new new relays that I put in there, and I'll explain to that what those are. But then the the charger goes through a um, a sequence. It gives you about 10 seconds for you to change the parameters in it, and if it doesn't, it just times out. And it says Type One charging, and it tells you. Um, kind of current oh, and, and then as soon as it starts you hear another relay go off and then it starts charging um, and it pretty much tells you uh, that it's charging uh, it tells you out the voltage and the amperage and right now it ramps up so it starts it started at about 10 amps and now it's uh, going 59 amps 65 amps, 69 amps, 70 amps. So that's where it stays. Um, I have it set actually higher to about 85 amps, but for some reason, um, it's staying about 70 amps. Um, I don't know why that is. It should be able to do more than that because it's 240 volts coming in. Uh, and it's only 120 volts coming out, so it's half the voltage should be able to uh, be able to pull more amps into the battery than it's pulling off the wall. It's, it's still the same amount of energy that's coming into the charger. It's just different voltage, different amperage. But um, you should be able to be pulling about 14 kilowatts with the 60 amp breakers off the wall. And at 70 amps into the batteries, it's, I think it's only uh, actually it's only putting in like nine, eight or nine kilowatts into the battery. So it's it's fast enough, but I, I have to figure out why it, it hasn't gone there. So let me talk a little bit about the new cluster of relays that I've installed here in my vehicle. Um, these are um, three relays. And they're uh, 12 volts each, ones that are triggered. And you can set, um, I bought those on eBay, they're like next to nothing, a few dollars. Um, they have the ability to, you can set the sensitivity for, for high or low uh, to be able to set them, set them off. Um, and that's a good thing because I actually needed that on, the, on this thing. So, there's three relays. One of them is set to, as soon as you connect the charger, uh, and the charger is energized, a 12 volt system in the charger. That's the one that runs the Arduino and all this other stuff. Then as soon as that has power, then th that triggers this first relay. And what that does then, that triggers an, uh, a normally closed relay. That is, uh, I was going to actually put it on the throttle, but it, I, I found that it to be easier to put it on the switch, the reverse forward switch that the Curtis controller has on that system and all it is is just disconnects that so basically while the charger is connected and it's powered up this car it's not going anywhere you cannot drive it you cannot you, you you'll get on the system will power on and stuff but uh, the throttle will just not respond it won't go forward and it won't go reverse and the reason is because I've almost <laughs> driven away a couple times with the the charging cable still plugged in the car and that's that's a bad idea you know that's uh, you don't want to do that especially with these big cables now that we're, that I'm using for this so that's the first one the second one is uh, is triggered by the the uh, chargers fan there's a fan that go only goes on when the charger is actually charging um, so Valerie uh, the guy that makes these charges it's pretty clever um, he installed a second winding on uh, one of the inductors that the charger uses. Um, he just ran another cable and did a second winding that would produce 12 volts and then uh, I think he rectified it 
and then he just put a, a new little uh, fan and and uh, 12 volt fan in the charger, and that only runs when the charger is gone. There's no relays. There's no circuits that you know to figure out how to turn it on. Only it's just it's simple. It's simple. It works. Starts when the charger starts charging. So. I took two the two leads there. It kind of messed things up for me because I thought I was going to be able to share the negative from the main system, the 12 volt system, to activate the first relay. Um, I was going to be able to share the negative and just have two, uh, you know, 12 volt signals to activate relays. But that didn't work out because it, it turns out this is a completely different source of 12 volts, and then I needed an extra an extra cable which I didn't have the connector that I used to set these three relays here only had nine conductors and I needed ten um, but it worked out because I set the the relay to the low setting and somehow it recognizes there's a signal there even though uh, the it's not connected the negatives not connected to it so um, it, what it does is it turns on the cooling system so that's what the second one does Here's the third one. So I I have two separate systems that need to power the cooling system, and that's the way I did it. So I just put two relays and and just parallel the outputs, and so two different systems activate a different relay, but it does the same thing. It activates, it turns on the cooling system. Um, that's what I installed here, and there's a little box there, and you can see it. I'll have to you know kind of secure it in there. Um, other than that, this thing is running real nice. Um, I eight and a half kilowatts. My battery's charged in less than three hours. You know, three two and a half hours or something, and it's done. Um, I did a test yesterday where I ran the battery all the way down, um, all the way down to there was like 2.6 volts in each cell. It was like somewhere like 90, 96 volts in the pack. Um, then what I did it was started charging uh, and my charger he keep, keeps track of how many amp hours it, it puts into the battery pack um, the dashboard over there also keeps track but it's not um, it I found that it stops at 180 if you tell it that it's a 180 amp hour pack then it stop it stops counting after 180 even if even if you were to put 190 amp hours so I wanted to see exactly what the capacity of the battery was so I can accurately put it in there. Well, it turns out it charged 180 amps into the pack. Um, it's kind of weird because I got some other times where I put m more in there. 193 I think I got the last time. But um, yesterday was 180. So completely empty to completely full 180. I just left it at 180 so now it's pretty accurate um, and it shows me um, that most of the time this thing is burning about 400 watts per mile which is not you know not great uh, but it's a big car so so anyways that's what I've been uh, doing on the uh, charging and um, and in my car, setting up all some of these little systems that kind of make it, you know, a whole lot easier and better to, to use and to live with an EV. All right, so that's the update for this week. Uh, I hope you guys are all having a great time doing your own builds. And see you next